person who volunteers her time and knowledge to the children of the church. Her name is Alexandria Lukashanak. Her job in the church is called Icon Lady. She describes her ministry as Icon Lady, as a calling to help bring church school children to a sense of reverence and love for our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Trinity, and the saints. Approximately once a month, she says, I visit the classes with an icon. I tell about the icon and feast day and troparion it proclaims. I provide a handout for the teachers and parents. Alexandria, the icon lady, says that icons are an important part of our spiritual lives. I try to instill an appreciation and reverence for them in the children. I hope they may want to know more. I pray that they may use icons in their prayer life. Why are icons such an important part of our spiritual lives? Why would a parish church create such a position for an icon lady? It all has to do with what we celebrate today. For today is the first Sunday in Great Lent. It is the Sunday known as the Triumph of Orthodoxy. <clears throat> the procession of icons in Orthodox churches this day, which we will do following liturgy today, it has happened in Orthodox churches every first Sunday in Lent for hundreds of years. The festal icon for today shows icons being held in procession by bishops, priests, deacons, and lay men, women, and children. If I asked one of the children to show me where Christ our Lord is in this church, what might he or she do? Probably even the children know to point to the icon of Christ. The word icon means image or picture. But that image is so much more than a picture. Who is this? Oh, come on, you know. Big Bird. Big Bird. Who is this? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Did you see Big Bird? Yeah. Did you see Donald Trump? You immediately know who it is when I hold up the picture. The question I would ask this is this. Is this really Big Bird? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do I hear from this side? No. No. This is not. This is just a picture of Big Bird. It doesn't look like a, a big bird that he is to come down and peck you on the head. Is this really Donald Trump? No. No. This is a picture of Donald Trump. On the other hand, if I held up the icon of Christ, I could ask you the same question. Is this Christ our Lord? No. no. Oh, answer, please. Is this Christ our Lord? No. You might say, no, it's only a picture of Christ our Lord, but that's not the right answer. <coughs> this is not just a picture of Christ our Lord, like that was a picture of Big Bird, or that was a picture of Donald Trump. <coughs> The church teaches us clearly that what we say to this image, what we do to it, how we act around it, all those things pass directly from this image to the person being directed, who is Christ our Lord. Do you ever wonder why we kiss icons? Or why the priest senses the icons so many times? <coughs> The reason is that our love, our affection, our devotion, our adoration, all these things pass directly to our Lord when we kiss or sense or bow down to the icon. But that's not always been possible. More than 1,100 years ago, the Byzantine Emperor Leo made a law that, de that declared icons illegal. You could not own one, 
You could not have one in church. You had to destroy all of them. Emperor Leo believed that people were worshiping <coughs> pieces of wood. For over 100 years, there were no icons in the churches. It took 100 years, but then all the bishops got together. They prayed and studied the Bible and the church fathers, and they made a new law. Icons must be in the churches and must be in the homes of the faithful. The bishop said in council that God proved to us that he could use created humanity to become one of us in Jesus Christ. In the same way God could use created pieces of wood to show us images of Christ, the Blessed Mother, and all the saints. On the first Sunday of Lent in the year 843, the icons were restored. Ever since this day, the first Sunday of Lent has been called the triumph of orthodoxy. The icons won. The icons are here as powerful messages of the mystical presence of heaven, right here. They are, as some have described them, little windows through which we see heaven. We can speak to Christ, we can speak to his blessed mother, we can speak to all the saints when we pray with these icons. And they speak back to us too. When we were building a church in North Georgia, my previous parish, I often was in the church alone, early in the morning and late at night. It was dark, it was cold. Some might say it was lonely, but I'm never alone in church. I am always surrounded by Christ, his mother, the Theotokos, and all the saints, as we are this morning. They are looking in on what is happening in here. They join in with our prayers. They see from their places as though they were looking through windows at us as well. And those who are here can see them, for these icons are windows on heaven. But perhaps most importantly, the victory of the icons we remember today reminds us that you and I also are icons. We are created in the image of God. We are icons of God. When people look to us, they are to see God. The high calling of everyone in this church today is to be an icon of God to the world. We are speaking the message of God. We show the love of God. We become what God created us to be, His image. Now what happens if an icon gets dirty? We carefully determine what is made of dirty. It might get smoke on it. It might get charcoal on it. And then we clean it. Very carefully, we clean it so that it looks like and goes back to the original image that it is. If I get dirty, if you get dirty, that is, I sin or you sin, as the image of God, I carefully find out what I have done to make me dirty. Then I take it to confession, and in front of the icon of Christ, I am carefully clean. Then I can show again myself as God's image. Today is the triumph of orthodoxy. It is the victory procession of the icons. It is our victory procession as people made in the image of God. May each of us become like the icon lady. May others through us and through these icons have a greater reverence and love for our Lord Jesus Christ, the Blessed Mother, the Holy Trinity, and all the saints. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.